All right, welcome back to Mr. PLS with Algebra 2. This is Unit uh, 2, Topic 3, SLT 21, Day 2. Uh, we're going to be exploring rational functions in how to graph them by using its um, asymptote form, which in this case is going to show you how to be able to graph it using transformations. All right, um, so let's say for the moment we have this equation, kind of like we did for the last lesson. I'm just going to take each x, plug it in for x, and solve for y. Negative 12 divided by negative 6 is positive 2, positive 6, positive 12. Can't divide anything by 0. That's not really possible. Anything divided by 1 is itself. Anything divided by 2, let's see, is negative 6, and that's going to be negative 2. Now, if I plot these points, so negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2 be about right there. Negative 2, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and negative 1, 12. Now, I know that's not really going to fit on the graph. I'm just going to put it like there. All right, um, I kind of missed that, so I'm going to try that again. Its graph is going to look like this, and then 1, negative 12 would be like right there, 2, negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 6, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2 would be right there. All right, so now, just like before, rational functions have um, two sides to them. Uh, it's going to curve just like that. And notice that there's going to be an asymptote right here down the middle and down the middle here as well. So there's a horizontal and a vertical asymptote for rational functions. So the domain can be anything, basically all real numbers, can be a set of all real numbers in which x cannot be 0. So 0 is the only thing it can be because that's the vertical asymptotes. The range, the height, the height can be anything except for the height cannot be 0 as well. Because of that horizontal asymptote, that tells you that the height the only height that it can't be is zero. So if it was below zero beyond this piece, if it was above zero beyond this piece, if it is zero, then it's not going to exist because it's on that dotted line. So the asymptotes are both x equals zero and y equals zero. How does this graph compare to the parent function? Now, this is different from the parent function because the parent function, if you remember on the last video, looked like this. And the big difference between this graph and this graph is basically it, the, the rational function is still taking up two of the quadrants, but it's taking up the opposite two quadrants. So instead of taking up quadrants one and three, it's taking up quadrants two and four. And the reason that caused that is the fact that this is negative 12. And the parent function would be a positive. So anytime you have a positive, it's going to take up the upper right and bottom left quadrants. And if you have a negative number, it's always going to take the upper left and bottom right quadrants. All right, so that kind of gives me an introduction on what we're doing today. So describe the transformations of what happened here. If this is the parent function, what has happened over here? So label the asymptote. So this asymptote here is x equals 0, and this asymptote is y equals 0. The domain is all real numbers except for 0, and the range is also all real numbers except for 0. That's a lot like the warm-up, so I'm not going to write that in. Number 2 says describe the transformation. Now, this time something's happened. So this is the original origin. The origin is 0, 0. That's the place where you always start whenever you're graphing something. Notice that the origin, I call this the new origin, has shifted. It's moved. It's translated 1, 2, 3 to the right. So this is right 3. And now that's going to change our, our equation, which you'll see on the next slide here in a moment. So the horizontal asymptotes and the vertical asymptotes have changed. The horizontal asymptote has not changed, though. So the horizontal asymptote is still at y equals 0. So that's the horizontal. And then the vertical has shifted. Instead of being over here, now it's hitting at x at 3. So x equals 3. 3, 0, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4. Every point on that vertical asymptote has an x of 3. So the domain now um, is going to be a little bit different. So now the domain can be anything except it can't be the asymptotes. So notice that this is always going to be the same for all rational functions. It's always going to be all real numbers except for the asymptote. The range hasn't changed at all. So the height still can be all real numbers except the height can't be the asymptotes, which is zero. So now we're going to get into transformations. Um, so writing the equations, I'm sorry. So we're going to come up with the equation from it. That's really the difference. We've been doing transformations. So this is a transformation that's moved left to and it's also moved up one. Now, there was another transformation on the last one. I believe I missed it. No, I did not. Okay, this one had a transformation that I missed. This one had a transformation of being reflected over the y-axis. So I did miss that because this one's going to have uh, a... It's going to have a numerator that's going to be a negative because it, the next point was down one, whereas this one, the next point was up one, so the numerator is going to be positive, which I can explain in more detail when I get to the next page after this one. 
Horizontal horizontal asymptote is at y equals 1 because that's hit where it hits the y-axis. Vertical asymptote is x equals negative 2. Once again, that's where it hits the x-axis. Vertical asymptotes. Uh, domain can be anything except for, so x can be a set of all real numbers in which x cannot be negative 2. The heights can be a set of all real numbers in which the height cannot be 1. All right, so now that we know this is the parent function, can you come up with an equation for this rational function? Yes, we can. Actually, before I write the one on top, let me just write a... So this is what I like to call asymptote form because basically all you need to know is the two asymptotes to write the rational function equation. So on the denominator is always the left and right transformation, and it's always the opposite of what you think. So it's not going to be x plus minus 2 because it's negative 2. It's going to be x plus 2. So the fact that the... It's always the opposite of whatever the vertical asymptote is. So if this is minus 2, then this is plus 2. And then you take the, um, you're going to take the horizontal asymptote and put it on the outside. So basically what I have here is the two asymptotes. We have our, um, this is our vertical asymptote and this is our horizontal asymptotes. Now how to get the numerator can be a little bit trickier, which I'll show on the next slide as well. So all you have to do is start at the new origin, move 1 to the right, and whatever it takes to get back up to the function or get back down to the function is your numerator. So if I move 1 to the right, up 1, 1 is the numerator. It's positive 1 because I went up 1 and not down 1. So A represents your dilation factor. That's how, that's basically, it's telling you how wide the graph is going to be. So the bigger the number, the wider it's going to be. The smaller the number, then it's more going to be more narrow. It's going to curve very sharply in that case. A, H is your left and right transformations, and K is your up and down transformations. So this is your uh, horizontal transformation, and this is your vertical transformation of how it's moved the origin, that is, to be more specific. Describe the equation, then rewrite the equation in using function notation. Okay, so um, not a scale that we're going to use a whole lot of, but I'll show you anyway. So you always take a, which is your 1, and multiply it by your f of x plus 1 and plus 4. So it's not really a whole much of a change. You just take your that. Multiply it by g of x minus 5 and plus 1 right there. And then you've got the same thing written in function notation. All right. Um, so last slide here. And we're going to do more of these examples on the next video. So if you still don't understand it after I go over these two examples, just watch the next clip. All right. So starting at the origin, the first thing I'm going to do is find the new origin. If it's x plus 1, that actually means 1 to the left. Remember, the denominator is always the opposite of what you would think. And then plus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 means up 4 right there. So that's your new origin. So the next thing I can do is draw my asymptotes. I now know that both the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote are going to go through that point. After I've done that, then I'm going to take my numerator to determine at least one point, if not two points. So the next point is one. So if I go right one, I would have to go up one. Now if I go up one and right one, it would be the exact same point. I know um, that we'll do that later on, but that would be the exact same point. So now what I'm going to do to graph it is I'm going to start as close as I can to the asymptotes, go down, hit that point, very sharply curve, and go the other direction, still not touching the asymptotes. So this line should be going down and to the right, but it should never touch the dotted line. Now remember, this is an odd function, so whatever I did on one side, you have to do on the opposite side of the function, and then graph it just the same. Curve through that point, and then try not to hit the asymptotes going in either direction. All right, and last one. So the transformations here are left 1 and up 4. The transformations here are right 5 and up 1. And there's also reflection over the y-axis, which we'll talk about afterwards at the very end. So x minus 5 means 5 right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then the plus 1 means up 1. There's my new origin. So I'm going to draw my two asymptotes, my vertical asymptote and my horizontal. Uh, representing this is x uh, equals 5 and this is y equals 1. Now that negative 1, so remember we did in the last one we went to right 1, so I'm going to go right 1, but this time I'm going to go down 1. And the reason why I'm going to go down 1 is because this is a negative. And remember I talked about uh, either at the beginning of this video or the last video, the fact that anytime the numerator is a negative, it's going to use bottom right and top, upper left instead of upper right and bottom left like we did over here on this question. 
It's always going to be an odd function, though. It's always going to be opposite. This, this is going to be the same on the opposite side of the origin. So negative 1, I do the exact same thing. I hit the point. I curve sharply. Don't hit either asymptotes. And it is an odd function, so I am going to do the exact same thing on the other side. All right. Thanks again for watching. I have one more video which is going to come up with that will finish the introduction on um, rational functions. And it's going to be more on actually graphing and writing the key features of functions using transformations. Thanks again for watching. Uh, please give it a like to help you learn something about rational functions and enjoy. Have a great day.